Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of uh, those uh, chill interview podcasts. We don't have a name series yet. We are still in El Salvador with uh, Kubo Pos and today I have the chance to be with Santos from ZBD. Santos, so gracias por estar aquí. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's very exciting seeing what these awesome students are up to. Wonderful education program that's been put together. Yeah, true. Um, maybe for the audience that doesn't know you or ZBD, even though it's pretty <laughs> famous by now, uh, what is ZBD and what do you do? Who are you exactly? Yeah, Zebedee has a few different uh, ways you can look at it. For example, we have a payments platform wherein uh, developers can integrate our API to process payments and move money at the speed of the internet. So that's our B2B side. And then we have a B2C side for consumers where we have this app. Uh, we focus on making the user experience great uh, such that you don't need to know anything about Lightning. And now we're beginning to expand into uh, social capabilities with Noster, so to make Noster very approachable for people that don't know anything about Noster, just like we did with Lightning. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about, a lot about Noster because uh, it is a topic that uh, I'm uh, highly interested. Um, maybe the first question I'm wondering is like, uh, what's your role in ZBD and how did you get to the point to create ZBD? Uh, what is like your, your background to, to be here uh, building the Lightning infrastructure, let's say? Yeah, um, I joined Zebedee roughly two years ago as a first product manager hire. So um, my background, I have around 14 years of experience in financial services and technology now. So I started out working for an insurance company. I went to work in uh, student loans at Discover Financial Services. That's where I realized, hmm, student loans are kind of scammy in the US with the rate of interest that you get, the amount of debt you can borrow. So I left that position. I went to Bank of America where I discovered Bitcoin in 2015. I joined Bank of America 2014. I was the number one uh, representative out of about 1,300 people in terms of sales. Learned everything about deposit and credit products. And my brother told me about Bitcoin. So then he said, oh, follow this guy. He's Bitcoin Jesus, uh, Andreas Antoninopoulos. And uh, then I learned about the banking cartel. <laughs> so after a while in 2016, I realized I don't want to be doing this anymore. So I quit my job and taught myself how to code along with like a liberal arts education using free resources. Um, fast forward, I got married. Then I got a job at American Express, which I felt like was the least unethical bank out there uh, in like credit risk. I built a bunch of products there and then I got a job at, in there global data repository team, which focused on bank integrations. Um, it was like the central data warehouse for all corporate data. So we had uh, 150 systems, give or take, sending us data, and like 50 plus systems were sending out data to for various use cases like risk and compliance, marketing and sales, fraud, uh, and of course, partnering with banks and doing those bank integrations. So. That, that was my background, and I also happened to play competitive esports back in the day. So, which game? Uh, I played World of Warcraft, StarCraft II, and Counter Strike Source. Um, so, when I heard about Zebedee Infuse, I naturally was very curious given the intersection between Bitcoin, payments, and gaming. And I thought there was something to that. So, as soon as a job application opened up for product owner, I immediately I uh, jumped on it and had applied due, since it was such an innovative use case. And I've been here ever since. Uh, I went from product manager to business lead of technology and product, then to VP of strategy. Uh, and now I'm beginning to focus on business intelligence and building out this team. All right. Way too much information. I love it. <laughs> I have three questions. Yeah. I'm going to try to remember them as it okay. goes. Um, so you actually come from more of a financial background actually into Bitcoin and then you learn how to code by yourself. How do you see the, the financial system being replicated into Bitcoin and how like some of the strats and um, the platform and the infrastructure is trying to simulate with Lightning? Because at the end of the day, we are trying to create a payment network. There used to be a payment network with the banking system. So how do you see like the link and synergy and what is missing in the Bitcoin ecosystem to compete or maybe to provide the services that is needed by the banking system? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think 
personally, to compete, we need more application and more application developers. So we have platforms now that can offer plug and play solutions. Mm -hmm. You no longer need to be a lightning engineer uh, or work or understand um, the software at the protocol level to build lightning applications. So I think teaching people how to build uh, lightning applications or applications that have lightning payments and infuse it as a part of the experience quite seamlessly without focusing on the Bitcoin aspect of it uh, will be how we can achieve like significant more adoption. So I, that's why I think programs like uh, here at, at Kubel Plus are fantastic because then you get a mixture of infrastructure engineers or lightning infrastructure engineers as well as application developers that are integrating Bitcoin into their applications, but it's not necessarily a Bitcoin application, it's an application that has Bitcoin capabilities, which I think is an important distinction. Yeah, so it's a bit what ZBD is now offering, right? API to connect to, plugins to set up in your own infrastructure, so you can, and you can use the power of Lightning, but you don't need to recreate, manage, and have all those difficult Lightning uh, development, right? Correct, and we see many different applications uh, beginning to emerge. Uh, from partners that have built with the Zebedee API. For example, we have like Fountain mm -hmm. uh, that has seamlessly infused uh, Bitcoin payments into the social experience. We're launching Social, which is like a social feed very similar to other Nostr clients that kind of mimic Twitter but have real value exchange within the uh, experience itself. Game developers have put Bitcoin in their games and use it as a reward mechanism. I think we'll see more and more of these sort of things. So it's really a lot about gamification and gaming. And you were mentioning Counter-Strike. The first time I had experience with ZBD was actually playing yeah. Counter-Strike <laughs> uh, and, and actually like getting a kill and getting sad because I was having a kill. And I thought, this is man blowing. I was like, okay, this is the future of gaming. This is so cool. You can bet games. Like, it makes so much sense. Could you please tell us a bit more like what is it that we're talking about, how it works, and uh, yeah, where is that product going or went? Uh, with Zebedee Infuse? Or yeah, exactly. The, Infuse uh, and yeah, so Counter-Strike as an example, I guess. Uh, we no longer support the Counter-Strike integration anymore, but there's some exciting stuff coming in the pipeline, I could just say that. Yeah, but sure. um, yeah, I think skill-based gaming uh, is a trend that's becoming extremely uh, popular in the gaming sector as well as um, generally with mobile gaming. So I think we'll only see an increase in the number of games that have a skill-based component to it that also have money tied into that experience. Uh, yeah, that not only is it more popular with users, but it's also generating more revenue uh, for the game developers themselves. Right, because they take a percentage fee, how, how would be the business model for them to include Bitcoin or Lightning within their games? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you can use it as a reward or engagement uh, mechanic. We've seen that. But we've also seen uh, when you have ads and you share a portion of that ad revenue, users watch more ads, so they have more impressions, so then the, the developer is making more money that way. So it's a point of differentiation for engagement, and also users like to get paid or have a share of that payment. Uh, for the skill-based gaming uh, in and of itself, the users are just more engaged when there's something on the line, it's skill-based and they're competing. So then that also is like an amplification of like the mobile gaming model as we see it right now. Yeah, that's true. I did also play a competitive video game, so I, I do get the feeling that when something is on the table, you play differently at some point. Yes. So, so it's really fun with the ZBD. It's like I think like you're trying to create new business model idea and make it like more easy to deploy. Is that kind of where you're trying to go, like help companies find new stream of revenue using Lightning and improving? Or, or am I wrong? Or, you know, how do you say that? Uh, why would a company use ZBD, let's say? You, you got it. Like companies ultimately care about KPI improvements, so key performance uh, indicator improvements. So that could be like, for example, reducing costs, uh, improving revenue, or engaging their existing user base because it's always cheaper to retain your existing user base than to acquire new users. And we're seeing that with the Bitcoin Lightning integration, uh, it does have that impact of retaining their users better. It's generating the more revenue because they're more engaged, they're watching more ads. Uh, and then there is the new business model where you can literally build virtual worlds with real economies, which was like our previous tagline. Uh, and that's what we're seeing play out today. So I, I do 
I think you're 100% correct. That's, that's exactly why uh, developers want to integrate um, Zebedee in particular, but Bitcoin Lightning Network holistically. They need an easy way to do it though, because ultimately it's very complicated. There's a lot to learn uh, in order to build your own infrastructure and you really don't need to rebuild it. Uh, really, they want a fast like two week integration so they can measure the results. So it's like kind of like uh, hypothesize, experiment, test, measure, and then iterate. So if you have a solution that's going to take them three or four months to integrate versus two weeks, they want the two-week solution. They don't really care to know all of the intricacies. They're not, they don't want to be uh, protocol engineers, but they do want the benefits of Bitcoin Lightning Network, and they want to do that in a simple way. So that's what Zebedee focused on doing is providing endpoints as a part of our API to make it incredibly simple and understandable to add Bitcoin into their games. So we have a very comprehensive documentation portal that developers can begin to look at and understand, okay, what are the, some of the things I presented here? Like, what are the primitives? What are the UX flows? How do I do this is really their key question. Why do I care? And then how do I do it? Yeah, that's true. It really is the process of integrating Lightning. And then if you really want to make it yourself, you can. Uh, we're here with a lot of students from Kuba Plus, and you're talking about the, like a lot of different stripes of the infrastructure to get it up. And you also mentioned that within CBD, you didn't fund it, but you went up the ladder trying to like get involved and more involved. So maybe I'm wondering for the viewers, like if you want to work in a Bitcoin company today, if you want to create something for our industry, uh, besides the education, how would you proceed or what advice would you have them to like get on going and try to get a big Bitcoin job, which is what those kids want at the end of the day, those students want, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I would say beginning to become invested within the Bitcoin community. So nearly every Bitcoin company has like a community of some sort. Most of them live in like Discord, becoming engaged, beginning to learn more about the company keeping an eye out on Bitcoin or jobs. I had, when, when I was searching for a Bitcoin job, a, a bit over two years ago now, I found them on Bitcoin or jobs. Yeah. There's also many more job boards, like TVP recently uh, created a job board that's available. So search some of the companies that are hiring, that are aligned with your interests, your experience, become a part of their community, try and build things or do some, some things for them, join their Telegram chat if they don't have Discord. And yeah, just become involved be a contributor uh, as an example. So for me, I started going to different meetups and I had already like was lurking online, Twitter, before I had like uh, moved into like a Bitcoin job and just always was a learner of Bitcoin. So listening to what's going on, what are the trends, podcasts, videos, and really trying to grasp Bitcoin and, and the Lightning Network. So that would be what I would do. And so taking the other approach, know that you are in the position to actually hire people what skill set are you looking for? And how do you find the uh, ecosystem of hiring Lightning Bitcoin engineers uh, is going? Is it good? Is it bad? Do we have enough dev? Do we lack talent? How do you see it uh, when you are actually in the other seat hiring, trying to hire people? Yeah, I think having uh, some of the most important soft skills uh, because the hard skills will vary depending upon the roles that you're interested in. So if you're interested in customer success, mm -hmm. you need to be like a people person, like proactive communicator. If you're a developer, depending upon if you're like building clients or you're building the platform, you need a specific skill set. So I'll focus on like general uh, soft skills. I like to see people that are great communicators uh, that have a learner mindset, like a growth mindset. So they're continuously learning and growing. Uh, those and that have a unique background is something that we really stress at Zebedee. So each person that's hired into the company has a unique background, uh, which gives them a unique perspective. And also being willing to challenge the status quo, I think is also incredibly important because you get the best ideas that way. That's true. And if you're a Bitcoiner, you have to challenge the status quo. If not, yes. something is wrong. <laughs> How many people work at Zebedee? I think we're at like 72 or 73 now. 72. Something like that. We just hired a few new hires as well, so um, we're still growing. No, that's cool. That's, that's actually so cool. Um, you have other passion next to ZBD that we've talked uh, several times. You are doing an e-learning platform, a bit like we do, but differently. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about, uh, I never know the name, Air Misoria, but what's the, English, what's the exact name? I cannot oh, yeah, pronounce it. 
emeraldized. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about it and uh, how is it built and especially like the lightning gamification track that you're trying to implement maybe with Noster? I don't know, I know you're passionate about it, so the best way is just to explain what it does. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's definitely like my passion project. I'm very, I love education. Uh, I've done, you know, several online courses myself. I think I've done like 75 and I'm an avid reader, so on and so forth. So education and the access to education is incredibly important. And a part of the problem with uh, massive open online courses or MOOCs, as you know, are the completion rate. So I think uh, given what we've seen with engagement increases in gaming, I think the same is true for education. So you can give monetary incentives to incentivize people to actually complete the courses and learn the material. So I had this hypothesis and I had been thinking about it for a few years. I was chatting it, uh, with some people at TabConf 2021 and I decided to start building it. So I built like an e-learning platform in Marketplace. So it has a Marketplace and learning management system, very lightweight, it's very much so an MVP. Uh, so I built it using Django, which is a web framework, uh, a Python web framework, um, Postgres database, and yeah, it's pretty, and the Zebedee API. So that's how I implemented it, and the materials that we sell are courses, workshops, ebooks, and soon to be audiobooks. And the gamification aspect of it is I think Noster is a perfect protocol for reputation. So yeah. you can offer badges. You can offer achievement for course completion. Uh, you can offer points. And then similarly to Khan Academy, you can give out the points, you can give out badges, and they complete courses, which is an achievement of, of completion. Uh, so then it's attached to the public key instead of like a, a handle that's within one platform. You can take these achievements anywhere. So as like job boards get built on top of Nostra or begin to use uh, authentication associated with Noster or Noster identifiers. It'll be easier to apply for jobs and to showcase your portfolio, your education history, like your reputation from certain applications. And each application can decide where they want to take the reputation history from. So then it reduces the fact that people could try and gamify it by creating their own reputation if they know the Noster protocol. So you can kind of create this federation of, of reputation. So that's kind of what I think uh, could be done with Noster, gamification and education. So this is my like side project. I'm very passionate about it. Uh, and I've made a few courses as well. Yeah, so uh, it's an amazing project, by the way. Uh, Noster, you talked about it. You showed us right now one example of how to use it to basically create your own new online identity that is connected to like your public uh, public key through your private key and where you can store all the data from like this platform but then the idea would be like to be cross-platform so basically we stop having platform hosting the data it's just on Noster and shareable if I, if, if I got it correctly maybe for the viewers that are not like us on Noster or trying to get to understand could you explain us what is Noster it's a tough question but I will straight away what is Noster in your point of view how do would you explain Noster to people I would say it's like a social communications protocol that is censorship resistant. Yeah. How does it work? Uh, basically, the way that it works is, is you have these different uh, WebSocket servers mm -hmm. that clients will connect to. Uh, so then, you, well, foundationally, you have key pairs. You can generate, anyone can generate a key pair. And with a key pair, you can sign events. Uh, and this, in particular uses a short Schnorr signature scheme. So you, everything in Oster is an event. So if it's a post, if it's a blog, it's an event. So then what you can do is you can fill out this content according to like an open source specification, applications or clients, those two terms are used interchangeably, create these events with your, key, with your private key, you sign the event and you, gen, well, you generate the ID and then you create a signature and then you're able to connect via a WebSocket to then send the data real time to a set of relays that you're interested in. So instead of it being siloed communications where the TikTok client talks to the TikTok server, Facebook server talks to, uh, or Facebook client talks to Facebook server, uh, just like the fiat system does, right? Like Bank of America talks to Bank of America and then they have to have these layers on top to be able to route um, payments. So. With Noster, you can just broadcast an event that you can provably show, I, this person that knows the secret, 
has created this event and sent it to these servers. So if one server shuts you down, okay, I have many other different servers that I can get this data from. Uh, similarly, if one client, client bans you or they're using an algorithm you don't like, you can connect to the relays that you're interested in on another client and stop using the other client. So then it be, creates this like censorship resistant uh, effect along with being able to take your identity between clients as well as there's ways to do it without even having to share your secret. Whereas if you're on Twitter, or Facebook, et cetera, right now you get banned from there, you lose all of your data, you lose your reputation that you've acquired, your following, so on and so forth. And they don't have the payment system that's perfect for the internet, the Lightning Network, which many Nostr applications have integrated with. So that, that would be, what is Nostr, kind of how it works? Nostr literally took over Twitter, the Bitcoin Twitter, let's be more specific. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it really came out of, uh, well, not Norway, because like, we knew it was introduction, but then when uh, Jack Dorsey gave the Bitcoins to really push Nostr, we saw a big shift in the mindset of most people to be like, all oh, right, that exists, let's start to use it. And it really started growing. You've seen the evolution since the beginning, right? And you've been quite involved in Nostr. So what have you built uh, on Nostr? Or how today would you uh, consider the infrastructure of Nostr to be like, I know you have some insight on that, so I'm curious uh, to, to, to get your feedback. How have you seen Nostr evolve since the beginning? Yeah, in the beginning, it was just like very tight group of community. There wasn't many people posting on it. So it was kind of like uh, very minor content. So it's kind of just like very much like IRC in the early days. It was like a channel with like a small group of developers that were just communicating. Uh, so there really wasn't like a whole lot of engagement or activity going on beyond like some basic conversation. Now, like some of the feeds are really busy. So now you have to kind of create and create, uh, curate content, a discovery experience, be able to connect uh, folks with other folks to see that content. Uh, we've now added like significant higher number of uh, Nostr implementation possibilities, which increases like the feature richness of uh, applications and what they can integrate in terms of events to create certain experiences, certain feedback mechanisms. Like initially we saw likes and then we saw like reposts, quote posts, then zaps, uh, so those things have evolved. Badges is an example. Uh, so it's been really cool to see developers uh, begin to experiment. And since it's so simple, once you learn the basics of it, it becomes much easier to build many different uh, Nostra applications. There's also now, like, initially, you had to understand the NIP, the Nostra implementation possibility, and implement it yourself. Then Fiatjof released a library in Nostra tools, which made it uh, more simple. Now there's NDK, which I think Pablo is working on, uh, which makes it also more simple to integrate and also have like a performant application. So seeing like the developer support, seeing the type of applications that are being developed, the features, and like the simplicity increase over time. So that's been really wonderful to see along with the total number of users actually posting, contributing valuable content. For me, uh, I've implemented um, and began experimenting with a forum concept. So for me, uh, growing up, I grew up on the internet, I actually dropped out of school, and forums were, were a place where I could go participate within the community, learn new things like building private game servers, hacking forums, so on and so forth, and I would love to see that same thing come back as we kind of move out of these centralized platforms like Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, and move back to like communities. Uh, so I built a forum call it, client called Formster, uh, and I, I'm working on like a proposal for the spec. So. I have like a proof of concept out there. That's pretty cool. That is, uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, Nostr is really a f really good way to regain sovereignty when it comes to like social media. It, like you said, you can just change, um, like if you get censored one in one section, you can just move to another. So there's a degree of uh, censorship resistance like you explained. The issue I often have here and I do have with Nostr is like the scalability aspect. So I'm just curious to get your point of view. Uh, do you think Nostr can scale? Or is it scalable? Or do you, I don't know, what do you think on that? Yeah, I think it's scalable. I think there's different models that can emerge too. Uh, so for example, like where Twitter, uh, like Twitter replicas um, kind of like creates this global social feed. I think we can subscribe to specific tags, uh, which is kind of the form, uh, I'm following a spec very similar to like NIP29 that Pete Joff, the co-author of, uh, 
where you can focus on like specific tags, almost like a hashtag, and pull the content from there within like a sub-segment of the total Noster community for a topic that you're particularly interested mm -hmm. in. For spam, I think, uh, like, I think we were chatting about this, proof of work yes. could be interesting, but also just like requiring to send stats to relays in order to like retain a post for a given period of time, hosting your own infrastructure as like models like Umbral and Start9 begin to take off. You can save all of your own data, just send it to, the, to your own relay whenever you're broadcasting an event from a particular client, as well as like paid Nostra relays. Uh, our CTO, Andre Nevis, put out a post using uh, Nostream and Zebedee API as a payment provider where you actually have to pay to be able to read and post events uh, to a particular Nostra client. So then you can kind of create these private communities or paid communities to increase the signal and reduce the spam. So I think, we'll, I think it will scale and I think there'll be different models. There could be relays uh, or application clients that have moderators and can manage the particular form or topic, similar to the idea I was mentioning earlier. So then you can delete things that might be explicit or that your community doesn't care about or might be spam. So I think there'll be different models that will emerge depending upon the use case and there'll be optionality just like there is with Lightning. You can choose to go custodial, you can choose to go non-custodial. Uh, and I think we'll see similar things, uh, but a little bit more complex with Noster. It's funny, Bitcoin is already complex, Lightning is even more complex, and now we are adding extra layer of complexity with less documentation, less, less educational courses, and everyone needs to just try to, to figure it out uh, themselves. Uh, have you talked about Nostr to any of the students here at Kuba Plus? I'm just curious to know if they know about Nostr. They do know about Nostr and they're very intelligent about it, honestly. Like, they had some really good feedback regarding Nostr. Yeah, the students here are incredibly bright. That's cool. I'm very impressed by all of them. Yeah, you talked with some of them for the Akaton. So as of right now, we are on the second part of Kuba Plus doing the Akaton. Um, and one of those bright students will end up at ZBD, I'm guessing, right? The idea is that you get a, an intern, right? Yes. Have you, how do you think, how do you feel they are uh, doing it? Like, do you think they have a good insight? They know what they're doing? They have the Bitcoin knowledge? I'm just curious to have your feedback as uh, one of the mentors of Kuba Plus. I think they're doing wonderful. Genuinely, I feel that way. I mean, a lot of the students didn't know about Bitcoin three months ago, and now they have like the understanding that, that took me like three or four years to cultivate, and they cultivated that in three months. And now they're building applications, which took me uh, five or six years before I wrote my first like Bitcoin script. So it's very impressive to see them make so much progress in such a short period of time. And now with the hackathon, they're building proof of concept and they're going to have something to show within a three day period. Uh, so the students are doing fantastic. Uh, very impressed by all the educational efforts here. Some of them are using ZBD API? Yes. What are they building? Uh, one is building a remittance service. All right. Yeah, so that, that's a very interesting project. I'm looking forward to seeing the pitch. All right, well, probably it's going to be somewhere on Kuba Plus channel, actually, not the Sovereign University. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, it's your first time in El Salvador, right? Yes. How did you have the chance to pay with Lightning? Have you seen a bit of the adoption? Like, what's your honest feedback on uh, the state of adoption here? It's a tough question, I know. I would say like to give a general feedback, I would need to be here longer. I only was able to spend like two days in San Salvador, so I can't really give an honest critique about that. In terms of El Zante, uh, nearly everywhere I've been has accepted lightning, so it's been a fantastic experience and indeed I have purchased uh, many coffees, in fact, <laughs> with uh, lightning. Yeah, no, it's cool. Uh... I find it always hard to, to measure the adoption rate because uh, as a Bitcoiner, you want everyone to accept, you want it to use the best solution and, and then you need to realize it. Uh, it will take time and uh, sometimes there's no, not the need. Like in El Zonte, yes, they do, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, what word of advice would you give to our audience, our students that try to learn Bitcoin, try to learn Noster, uh, but they are like overwhelmed with all the information they can get from everywhere. Just, you did the parkour, you learned Bitcoin from scratch, you learned how to code from scratch. What piece of advice would you get, get, uh, give to people that do try to, to learn and improve their skills? Yeah, that's a really great question. For me, um, the best advice that 
I could give is to start small. So like, start as simple as possible. If you're finding something to be too difficult and complex, it's completely okay. There were many times where I had to practice humility and I would try to learn like, for example, React without first having understood JavaScript very well. And then I tried to learn JavaScript and then I was like, well, this is so complicated for me. So instead I learned Python, uh, which has a much simpler syntax. You don't have like function calls within functions. So it was a lot easier for me to understand and I gradually progressed. So it's like eating an elephant. You just take one bite at a time. And if you're finding it to be too difficult, take a step back and simplify and maybe go down uh, one level in terms of like uh, complexity or skill level. And I think the platforms that we're building uh, also really address this, especially yours, like you're focusing on creating a hub of Bitcoin content for all skill levels. So starting at the basic skill level and gradually progressing and learning the subjects that are like adjacent to Bitcoin because that only increases your understanding of it uh, as a technology, you know, community, as well as like uh, the other facets uh, that are important to Bitcoin. So yeah, that would be my advice is to stay humble, um, start small and gradually progress and to always keep learning, never stop. Never stop because Bitcoin is not gonna stop. So uh, there's a question I ask to almost everyone here. It's like, what do you think is the future heading? Like what cool tech do you want to see implemented? Where do you think we, we are aiming and what is missing in Bitcoin right now? Just general taste of like what you would want Bitcoin to be better at or get improved. It can be the be a VIP, privacy, whatever. I would like to see more applications and more uh, use cases of uh, infusing money into existing experiences to make them richer and more meaningful to users. Uh, and I think we're seeing that play out already between gaming, social experiences, and there's probably many experiences that I'm not even familiar with. One uh, idea that I was thinking about that could be interesting was, okay, you know, checking accounts in the US, there's, the interest rates are high now in the US or at least relative to what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate that banks pay out on like a checking or savings account is abysmal. It's like 0.05% uh, of, of interest that you earn on your funds. What if you paid that out in Bitcoin? So instead of paying out one penny or three pennies of interest in your checking account, which means nothing, you're paying that out in SaaS, which actually is a substantial amount of SaaS, especially if you hold them for the long-term future. So I think like seeing more rewarded experiences and other ways of looking for micropayment payouts where it could be meaningful and better than the existing system. And then we'll gradually um, have adoption as a medium of exchange, which will then become a unit of account. So right now I think Bitcoin has proven itself quite well as a savings technology, looking at from where Bitcoin price started to where we're at now. Uh, and then now we need to increase like the velocity of money, like the number of applications paying it out the amount we're spending. So I think earn and spend is really what I want to see in the future. And as well as like reward mechanism payouts. So that, I think that will distribute Bitcoin on a global scale, but also like increase the usage, which will then make it the medium of exchange, which then becomes the unit of account. So that's, that's my personal thing that I'd like to see. I like it. Yeah, I like what you're saying. Do you see any kickback or technical challenges that is not yet here in Bitcoin? Uh, and that we need to pass? Or do you think we have most of the biggest uh, building blocks already here and just need? I might be too above my, my pay grade. Um, yeah, I, I like to stay humble there. Um, I do think we need much more education uh, is what I, everywhere that I go, whether it's like here in El Salvador, in Mexico, or in the United States, there's a gap in education, uh, educational materials that are available in like the native language because a lot of the educational materials are available in English and use quite advanced English to communicate them. So I'd like to see more people getting involved. And that's another way people can get involved is everybody knows something special and knows something unique. Uh, and to share that information, write content, go to meetups, share it with their friends, record videos, post it on TikTok, YouTube, whatever channel you prefer to use and um, make it more available and widely understood. Yeah, I think you're right. We need a more local educator that try to vulgarate, vulgarate uh, the content. And um, if needed, like at the university, we, we did uh, find a smart way to translate everything in all languages. So we, we, are, we are teaching on a local base, but it's not personal enough. And I think we need Bitcoiners in every part of the world to 
take that uh, content that is here and available that has been translated and try to create a unique way to teach it to their local community. You know, At the end of the day, we can have the best e-learning platform if it's not local, if we don't have an adoption from the people that you already know, your friends, your family, the community. Uh, I feel like it's going to be struggling. And also, like you say, uh, you don't teach Bitcoin the same way to someone which is 40, to a professor of university or to a kid that is like 14. And I think gamification, uh, you mentioned TikTok, but like making Bitcoin part of his daily life without him realizing is the way forward uh, for mass adoption. I think you're totally right here. Yeah, because yeah, then it'll just be money at that point. People yeah. won't even really un like care to understand. It'll just be money and the preferred money, the best technology to use. And I think that will work out quite well. And I, I completely agree what you said about localized education, though. I think the efforts that you're making are great and like absolutely a step in the right direction and filling a huge gap that's currently existing within Bitcoin education. But I am very bullish on it. I see that many new Bitcoin education startups, individuals are focusing on it and it's becoming a, its own segment. Just like we have like gaming segment, we have payment segment uh, within that chart with uh, describing like the ecosystem of lightning. I think education will be on there too with all the great uh, endeavors. There's also many more hackathons going on for lightning than previously like what's happening here with Kubo Plus, uh, what Pleb Lab's doing, Bolt.fun. We're starting to see like that ecosystem uh, kind of have its big bang yeah. where it's just like now it's expanding and now these developers are going to go out, be able to teach other students, right? Build more lightning applications, ship and see what sticks. Yeah, that's true. We do have a lot more of a hackathon coming up and it's real fun. Uh, hopefully one day, and uh, teasing for you, a global uh, worldwide uh, hackathon could be really fun. Um, all right, that was a really cool uh, discu discussion, actually. Um, we wish, uh, I don't know, um, do you have anything else you want to say to the, to the audience? Maybe where they can find you? Uh, what, uh, maybe if you're hiring on DBD, don't hesitate. I don't know. Where can they find you? And one last one. Yeah, build it, ship it, share it. That's what I would say. Like simple, sweet. I know I can be a bit verbose, but yeah, build it, ship it, share it. Uh, you teach something that some, someone teach someone something that they don't know, and then they'll teach someone something they don't know, and they'll create this virality effect for global Bitcoin adoption. In terms of where to find me, you can find me on Noster. I spend way less time on Twitter these days. It's just kind of not very good anymore. So underscore at santos.lol is uh, my NIPO5 identifier. You can find me there. Uh, and you can find anything related to Zebedee at zbd.gg, or you can go to zebedee, Z-E-B-E-D-E-E dot -E -E I-O. All right. Santos, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking part of Kuba Plus, uh, helping the university uh, grow, and all the great talks we had uh, do help me kind of orientate where we should go on gamification. And I think the, the thing you said on Noster is a really good idea. Uh, I think it'd be stupid not to utilize Noster to spread the badges, the exam, the, the whole certificate, and, and then we can aggregate like your badges from other platform into, not, not ours, but like we can, like if someone needs to get a job, you can just like use multiple e-learning solution to aggregate and, and get a certification. So it, it is a, you do have a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, we can be cooperative instead of com com compete, right? Like for the same space, we expand it together. That's exactly, yeah, I, I do agree. And uh, Bitcoin is young, we, we are still uh, literally building. So there, there is room to, to make the cake grow a lot, a lot, a lot more. Santos, thank you so much. Cheers. Don't forget to like, subscribe. If you have any question, put it in the comment question, uh, data section and maybe he will answer, maybe not. Honestly, I don't know, probably not, but ask questions anyway. Uh, subscribe, like, and I uh, will see you at the university or some other video. Bye-bye.